In this video, I will show you where Enzo originated from, along with some of the things I discovered in the process of using the revolutionary Mesh to Meta plugin, which allows you to create a metahuman using either a face scan or a head mesh. Special thank you to Max Warlin for sharing this environment and metahuman lighting setup for the purpose of this video. The original mesh used to create Enzo came from 3D character artist Thomas Sackman, who sculpted it from scratch for his course on CG Circuit, where he shares his entire workflow on how to create a realistic human. In this portion of his course, he teaches you how you can sculpt and texture a character head from scratch in ZBrush, using ZWrap to project texture XYZ maps, Maya for manual retopology and UVs, Mari to prepare displacement maps and photo projection, and adding final texturing touches in ZBrush. I highly recommend you check out his course and I have attached a link to it in the description. If you have never used this plugin before, Unreal Engine has a great YouTube tutorial where Senior Technical Product Manager Rafael Fragapane walks you through this process. To use Thomas's head mesh with this plugin, all I had to do was install the free plugin from UE Marketplace and enable it in my UE5 project. I imported Thomas's head mesh, and upon import, I made sure that the mesh was facing the X axis and under advanced that combined meshes was checked on as the eyes were separate. Checking that the head and eyes came in as one mesh and facing the X axis, I imported the face albedo texture as that is all you need. For the purpose of this video, I am also importing the eye textures. Once you have assigned the textures, you now have a head mesh ready to be used with this plugin. The next step is to create a MetaHuman Identity Asset by right-clicking and selecting MetaHuman Identity. Whatever name you give this will be the name of your MetaHuman. In this window, all you do is select your head mesh from Components to Mesh, select the body, in my case, I use the male normal body weight tall, and then begins the framing and lighting process. These next few steps are extremely important as they will affect the placement of the trackers. Change the field of view, positioning the head in the center, and start adjusting the lighting. For lighting options, there is lit mode, unlit mode, and lighting only. To show you some variations in the trackers with each lighting option, I have tracked an active frame in lit mode first. In unlit mode, you notice that the trackers around the lips are not as defined. And in lighting only, we can see a slightly different variation. To demonstrate the differences in lighting options, you can see that I got different results in the mouth and lip area of these three metahumans. You will also get different tracking when not using an eye texture. If I track an active frame without an eye texture, you can see the trackers have a harder time defining the eyes regardless of the lighting. You will have to manually move the tracker points in these cases. Regarding trackers, you also have the ability to include additional trackers if you want to define specific features, such as the brows, the eye crease, the nostrils, the upper and lower eyelids, even the ears, and mental labial fold. One thing to note is if you do want to add multiple trackers, for example, the brows, and you cannot see them, zoom out. You can then select the tracker and move it so that you can manually position it correctly. I kept it simple and just used the eyes, nasolabial fold, and mouth. I went through the trackers, positioning them in areas where I wanted sharper definition, such as the lips. If you need to add more trackers, just hold down the control button and click. Once you are happy with the tracker positioning, all you do is run the MetaHuman Identity Solve. You can view the generated mesh here. I recommend you view this from various angles. In the event, you need to move trackers around and rerun the Identity Solve. The last step is to send this to the MetaHuman backend. Once you see this notification, you can access this MetaHuman through Quixel Bridge. As you notice, I have generated different versions of Enzo from the same head mesh. To start modifying this metahuman, you start the metahuman creator. And this is how simple the process was. In the next video, I go over the modifications I made to Enzo in the metahuman creator.